Hello? Thanks, Kent. Now, hi, everyone. I'm very excited to be here. Now, I'd like to start us off with a quick survey. So we've got a decent sample size here. And if I can ask everyone to participate, please. So can we all please stand up? OK, my first question is, please stay standing if you have thought about starting a business. So if you have ever thought about starting a business, please stay standing. Otherwise, please be seated. Oh, that's, that's most of us. I'd say a good 95%. OK, well, the next question to those still standing is, if you've actually started the business, please remain standing. Otherwise, please be seated. Ah, we're probably down to about 10%. OK, and the final question to those still standing is, if you used actuarial techniques in your business, please remain standing. Otherwise, please be seated. Fantastic. We, we've got about, we've got a good, good handful of us, probably half a dozen or so. Look, I'd encourage you to share your experiences with everyone someday so that we can all collectively learn from your experience. So thanks for participating in the survey. Please be seated. So look, I decided to write a paper and presentation um, to share my experience in developing a childcare business. Now, I found actuarial expertise to be very useful in setting up the business. And in return, I found that the entrepreneurial experience helped make me into a better actuary. So it got me thinking, uh, did other actuaries have a similar experience? And I went out and I had a chat with a few of us. And I noticed that there was a key theme. We all agreed that actuaries had a lot to gain from the entrepreneurial experience. So let me bring you through my journey today. Now, this is the site where we built our childcare center. I took this photo not long after we purchased the property. So on the left, behind the hedges, it's a house. And on the right is a tennis court. And as I was taking this photo, behind me is a primary school. And down the road to the right, it's a major shopping center and a new train station is being built there now. So we're going to be seeing a lot of cute photos to keep with the childcare theme today. Now, I love this photo. It tells me to, to think outside the box. Now, um, the idea to build a childcare business came from my father. Right? He saw in the family a lot of the skills required to make the idea work. And so he challenged me to use my actuarial skills beyond my career and help the family start this business. So in hindsight, my father created an entrepreneurial culture within the family. And certainly, we would have been much less likely to start a business without his encouragement. And so it got me thinking, childcare business. Yeah, it, it had a lot going for it. It had government support. It had a growing population. And it had a cultural shift towards working parents. So how did I apply actuarial techniques? Well, I'm not going to go into the technical detail today. But what I wanted to do was to highlight the key areas where actuarial techniques were used. So the idea was to start a childcare business. And I found actuarial techniques to be useful to optimize that idea. So one of the things we had to optimize was location. And there were a few key variables. You had childcare fees, which varied from suburb to suburb. You had property prices, 
which varied greatly from suburb to suburb. And you also had demand, which varied from suburb to suburb. So I went and I gathered some data. So some data I got online. I went uh, to get childcare regulations. And I also got development control plans. And other data, I went to consult experts. So I consulted an architect, and he gave me details on construction costs and also site selection. I also went to chat with real estate agents who gave me uh, details on property prices. I also surveyed childcare centers, and one of them was very helpful. They even gave me a detailed breakdown on their operating expenses and their capital expenses. Now, of course, not all child cares were so forthcoming uh, in providing their data. And indeed, at times, I had to go undercover <laughs> with my little niece. And so we got details on their child care fees and their vacancies. Um, so with all this data, I created a model. And that model showed that the childcare centre needs at least 56 places to have the scale to meet our profitability criteria. Another thing that the model showed was the areas where childcare fees provided the greatest return when compared to property prices. And so in these areas, I did further studies. So I did demographic studies on these areas. In addition to ABS statistics, I also contacted the local councils, went on their websites, and I got details on um, their residential development applications and approvals. So with this information, I was able to project the future households in the area. And with that, I compared it with the existing childcare services in the area and I worked out if a new childcare center was required. So by now we had narrowed down our search area down to a few specific suburbs. And look, we were prepared to wait until the right property came around, rather than jump into something that wasn't optimal. Uh, this is because our business idea was very capital intensive. And we really only had one shot to make it work. And this was to prove crucial in the events to come. Now, I also found useful the actuarial focus on solvency and capital requirements. So with uh, the model, I used it to develop a business plan. I went to the bank and I got a loan. And I also found actuarial expertise useful to help execute the idea. So I used actuarial techniques to do the pricing and risk management. But I also found that uh, the control cycle was very useful. So when things didn't go according to expected, I used the control cycle to work out what was going wrong and adjust our approach. So what happened? Well, even though we planned very carefully, it was an eight-year struggle, but we finally made it across the line. Um, looking back at the experience, I see a series of mistakes, a series of learnings, and adjusting our approach to make this business work. And Therein, I found out what was the core of the entrepreneurial experience. It was you know, bruised and battered. It's all about finding solutions to these setbacks. And so let me bring you through the key events. So look, to help execute our idea, we needed to consult with a lot of experts. So we had architects, we had engineers, we had lawyers, we had real estate agents, we had certifiers, we had builders, project managers. Now the architect that we decided to go with 
They drew beautiful designs, but they had no experience in childcare. So while they drew us a gorgeous building, it was over-designed. They drew us uh, walk-in fridges. We had commercial-grade kitchens. We had automatic doors. And we had these really funky lights that shot the beam up to the ceiling and reflected it back down to the ground. Um, so when we went to Builders for Tender, the cheapest uh, quote came in at double our construction budget that we told the architect. So in that, we learned our first lesson. Uh, we learned that experience is a commodity. It can be bought. And it's much cheaper in terms of time and money than hiring inexperience. So with that lesson in mind, we went to look for an experienced builder. Now, we were referred to this builder who they actually developed childcare centers and they ran childcare centers as well. And we did a due diligence on them and we visited a couple of their centers and we thought, oh, wow, fantastic, these guys are ideal. So they were a small operation, so that they had a builder, they had a draftsman, they had um, engineers, and they also had a relationship with their certifier. So what they said was, we will simplify the building design for you so that it will meet your construction budget, which they did very well. But they said, look, to make the construction process smoother, you let go of your inexperienced architect. We'll, we'll look after this. And so, look, more than two years later, uh, that builder went into liquidation and left us with an incomplete and you know, building with a lot of mistakes in it. And in hindsight, we were exposed to a lot of risks that we didn't fully appreciate at the time. Firstly, there was a conflict of interest risk. There was a clear conflict of interest risk with having a related party certify your, the builder's work. Another thing was that we didn't have the expertise to go and review the builder's work. And we'd already let go of our architect. Um, and then there were contract ambiguities, which meant that it wasn't very clear what we could do when things started to go wrong. So it actually took us quite a while before we could even terminate the contract. And finally, we, we didn't have insurance when things went wrong. You know, uh, as an actuary, <laughs> oops. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I really dropped the ball on that one. Um, and so poor risk management was our biggest mistake. And a part of me wonders if things would have been different had I done that ERM course. Yeah. So let, let me bring you through the site the day that... Uh, we took it over from the builder. Now, this is the front of the building. And you'll notice there's like a big mound of weeds at the front. And the roof is incomplete and leaking. There's just discarded materials everywhere. And you'll notice that there's a stormwater detention tank that remains uncovered, you know, so someone could easily fall in there and hurt themselves. So what we did was we boarded everything up, we fenced the area off, we got insurance, just in case anyone hurt themselves, and we took some time off. Now, how much did this mistake cost us? Well, in terms of time, it cost us more than three years. And money-wise, it costs us a lot of money. But in my view, the biggest cost, the biggest cost was opportunity cost. 
because we had lost the golden window where we could have gone in and built another center in that area. Because indeed, you know, a couple years after I took this video, we noticed childcare centers building around us. Now, I, I love this series of photographs because um, persistence to me means it's like a child learning how to put on her shoes. Okay, we got a building consultant on site to tell us what was wrong with the building. And his comment to us was that this is, uh, this, this is incompetence on a grand scale. And he said that, and he recommended that even though the builder has gone into liquidation, he still recommended that we take legal action to sue the builder for his personal assets. Now, we had learned the lesson of opportunity costs already, and we realized, look, we only had this as a certain amount of capital. We could either finish building the center, or we could take legal action, and who knows what would happen. And so we thought it was best to focus on the business and finish that. And although we felt very aggrieved, we thought, OK, let's just write it off as a very expensive learning lesson and make sure that we don't do the same mistake again. So after taking more than a year off, we came back to the project and we realized we had quite a few offers on the table from other childcare operators and developers. So they were very tempting offers, but we decided to um, pull out our model and use the control cycle. So we updated the assumptions, and we realized that the project was still very much feasible, because a few things have gone our way. Firstly, interest rates have halved. Another one was that Childcare fees have doubled, and the population uh, in the area grew as we projected. But the overwhelming factor that convinced us that our project was still feasible was the fact that we had gotten in there first, and we had secured the best location, even compared to our competitors. I mean, we were just across the road from the primary school, and we were down the road from the shopping center, and there was a new train station being built there. So at this crucial moment, actuarial techniques helped us to decide to continue with the project rather than take up these uh, tempting offers. And you know, learning from our mistakes, we got it right in the second time with no major issues. So we finished building, and that led me to reflect on what the entrepreneurial experience is about. You know, there will be setbacks. It doesn't matter how carefully you plan. There will be setbacks. And the key is to learn from the experiences and adjust your approach to make the business work. And ultimately, resilience is all about getting that right perspective. Now, strength in diversity. So our family had quite diverse skills. So at different phases of the project, a different family member would take the lead role. Uh, for me, I took the lead role in the development phase. And in the operational phase, my role has changed. So because it was never my intention to go and work in the childcare. Um, indeed, we've got people who are better positioned to do so, and the more hands-on I get, the more I'll get in their way. So we had a family member who had the experience and qualifications to be the director. We had another family member who's a chartered accountant, and he's the financial controller. Another family member had experience in advertising. And so he does the websites, Facebook, uh, flyers, and marketing material. Now, for me, from a technical actuarial perspective, I contribute much less. I mean, I do the pricing. I make sure our insurances are up to date. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but you see, my role has changed. Now I see myself more as an enabler. So I maintain a close relationship with the family. I maintain a cohesive team. I stay passionate. And I make sure that the team has the necessary tools to do their work. And I also make myself available to act as a sounding board. OK? So reflecting upon this, I realized that business partners are a key source of strength, especially ones with diversified skill sets. And so to anyone out there who's, I mean, I know there's quite a few of you who've thought about starting a business but haven't started yet, I guess what I'd recommend is for you to really seriously consider getting a business partner on board. So how are we doing today? Well, you know, we've been open for a year now, and there's been ups and downs, but we are cash flow positive, and it looks like we're going to be OK. Now, I'd like to bring you through a quick tour of our center. So this is the front. Now, you'll notice that that mound of weeds, that was there. We, we buried that under the car park. And um, the, the building itself, it's inspired by Lego. So we've got blocks of you know, different size and shapes uh, and different colors. And so oh, did I mention I'm also the gardener? <laughs> and the, now, you, you can't see the garden there, but it's just out front. And we've got the best garden on the street. So this is the preschooler's room. So what we wanted was to make the unique building design a competitive advantage. So as soon as the parents step foot in the center, we wanted them to be impressed. This is the baby's room. So this is for children 0 to 2 years old. And this is the cot room where they sleep. And this is the playground, where you know, we've got different shapes and colors uh, to stimulate growing minds. So how did the entrepreneurial experience make me into a better actuary? Well, I went out and had a chat with a, a few of us, uh, actuaries who have entrepreneurial experience. And we all agreed that the entrepreneurial experience gives the actuary accelerated opportunities to develop. And there were a few key themes that I wanted to highlight. So firstly, we thought that the entrepreneurial experience made the actuary better at finding practical solutions to make the business idea work. The entrepreneurial experience encourages the actuary to think innovatively and apply actuarial techniques beyond business as usual. And we also thought that the entrepreneurial experience teaches the actuary to take calculated risks. Um, the entrepreneurial experience also teaches resilience, because you know, starting a business, it, a lot of decisions have to be made, and mistakes will be made. It doesn't matter how carefully you plan things. There will be setbacks. And the key is to learn from those mistakes and adjust your approach to make the business idea work. Now, that's no different to an actuarial career, because you may get setbacks in your career. You may fail exams. You may be overlooked for a role. You may be made redundant. But the key is to regroup, stay focused, learn from the experience, and adjust your approach to move forwards. OK, so be persistent, adapt, and keep moving. Another thing that I thought the entrepreneurial experience teaches is leadership, because it teaches you what the strengths and limitations of actuarial techniques are. And indeed, 
you have to go to consult other experts who are better positioned to provide the advice than actuaries are. And this teaches you how to be an enabler, to enable them to provide you with such advice. And indeed, for me in my career, it's made me into a more effective team leader and manager. And it's prepared me well to manage more senior staff. Another thing that the entrepreneurial experience requires is that uh, you work with professionals of different backgrounds. So to communicate with them, you, you'll, it's more effective to communicate in simpler terms and in non-technical language. And you realize that what they want to know, what they care about, is what you have to recommend, rather than how you came to that recommendation. So, you know, we had a, quite a few people here who uh, were thinking about starting a business. So, what would I recommend? How would I recommend you approach entrepreneurialism if you wanted to get the experience? Well, I like this picture as well. This is one of my favorites. It's uh, kids starting a lemonade store. You know, start small, start early. Now, what I learned about entrepreneurs is that they combine three key elements to start a business. That being an idea, capital, and expertise to execute. But crucially, crucially, none of these elements have to belong to the entrepreneur. Indeed, I learned a new word in doing this presentation, the intrapreneur. It's simply somebody who works in an entrepreneurial capacity for their employer. So that's one thing I'd recommend to people who want the experience is to consider intrapreneurialism. Okay, and here uh, I would like to clarify that an intrapreneur is different from a business manager who is somebody who runs the business. But what would I recommend for somebody who really wants to start a business to uh, go out and do something completely new? Well, well, what I'd recommend is this, that you leverage upon your actuarial expertise as a competitive advantage, and you combine that with entrepreneurial instinct. So on one hand, you don't want to overanalyze things. But on the other hand, you also don't want to make you know, rash decisions based on gut instinct that prove to be fatal. The balance, there's a balance there, and it lies somewhere in between. And it would vary from opportunity to opportunity. And part of me recommends, uh, well, part of me wonders if our first builder could have used some actuarial advice. Uh, another thing I'd recommend is to get business partners. So ideally, it's a business manager who has expertise in that field and someone whose skills complements your own. And finally, I'd recommend limiting any potential conflict of interest with your actuarial career. Now, unless your, your business idea is to go start an insurance company, uh, usually that conflict of interest is usually in terms of time and availability. Now, I wanted to compare the, you know, my approach to entrepreneurialism with entrepreneurs of different backgrounds. So I had a chat with a few of them, and I realized that they used a lot of entrepreneurial instinct and very little of the analysis. Now, indeed, one IT entrepreneur I, dis I interviewed, he, he's got a very interesting business. So he does e-commerce platforms to which other businesses would subscribe to. So he said to me, Kevin, I don't do any numbers. I don't even do business plans. I do action plans. So what he does is that he would make the product, he will develop the product first, and then he would go and look for customers. 
and he would adjust his products according to the customer feedback. Now, they call this type of approach the ready, fire, aim approach, where the, you know, it works well in a fast developing industry where there's relatively low capital requirements. So, you know, if you can imagine a very fast moving object and the entrepreneur just shoots, bang, bang, bang. And then he watches where the bullets fly, and then he adjusts his aim accordingly, and bang, bang, bang. You see, that, that approach wouldn't have worked for our childcare business, simply because the capital requirements meant that we only had one bullet. And so we had to aim very carefully before we fired, and we had to make sure that we hit the target. Now, another interesting approach uh, to entrepreneurialism is charities and pro bono work. I was at an earlier session today, I think it was called The Causeway, um, and they discussed about applying actuarial techniques, like technical actuarial techniques, to charities and in a pro bono capacity. So I think actuaries have a lot to gain from that experience. And certainly, if anyone is interested in donating their time, I'd recommend that uh, you contact Hayden Bernal uh, over lunch. So look, this conference is about reimagining the future. So I would like to leave you with some visions today. Firstly, for members, I say, Imagine actuaries working in all industries. Imagine all industries are considered traditional. And I say, imagine that there were courses to teach about the actuarial way of doing business. For the Institute of Actuaries, I say, imagine the higher profile the enhanced reputation across all industries. Imagine having a culture of innovation. And imagine having the infrastructure to encourage and support actuaries to move into non-traditional fields. For employers of actuaries, I say, imagine the competitive advantage and innovation you have with a team of actuary intrapreneurs. And imagine those actuaries adding value to all areas of your business. Okay, well, that's my presentation.